When it comes to decorating custom shirts, it is not uncommon for your customer to want to supply their own goods, or maybe you offer contract printing and embroidery services and you let other decoration shops ship you the shirts from a supplier for you to then decorate. In this case, we don't want to raise a purchase order with one of the suppliers already in Deco Network and accidentally order shirts that we don't need. So, the best way to accommodate customer supplied products is to create generic products that represent each type that a customer could supply. So, for example, you really need one customer supplied t-shirt, one long sleeve, one hoodie, one v-neck. Uh, when it comes to a customer supplied product, you're trying to do two primary things. One, charge the correct decoration price. When artwork is added, we need it to calculate that price automatically, instantaneously, just like if it was any other product from one of our suppliers. Secondly, we need the customer to be able to get the visual representation of the artwork on the shirt, and our production staff needs that same thing. So we aren't gonna deviate from the strategy of our supplier products that we add and the customer can drop the artwork on the shirt, they see where it is, we see where it is, and we're charging the correct decoration price. We don't wanna deviate, again, from this logic. So what is the difference between a customer supplied product and one that comes from a supplier? It's really one thing. There's no blank product uh, price. It's just the price of the decoration. Um, but customers could supply an infinite amount of products. So that's why we typically make one generic for each type. So if I come over here to um, supplier count details, the first thing I wanna do is define a new supplier. And that supplier is gonna be customer supply. You can skip the PO phase when it comes to ordering blanks, but I suggest still putting customer supplied products through the purchase order phase. That way you can account for when you actually physically have the shirts on hand. Um, skipping the purchase order phase can then lead to confusion as you don't know when the shirts actually arrived in the shop or not. You, you don't wanna drop the ball in that situation. The next thing I want to do is come over to product groups. Know that your products are put into groups so that we can make bulk decisions for that group. So the majority of products are in this apparel group. Then you have accessories, blankets, robes, headwear, aprons. It's pretty obvious what these mean. I mean, it means all of the hats are in the headwear category. And if I want to make the bulk decision to all the products in this product group, I easily can. So we're gonna create a new product group. Um, so we have greater control and we can separate these products from the ones we already have in the system. So we're gonna add a category, customer supplied. Hit refresh. And again, product groups allow us to greater control um, this group of products, which you're gonna see in a second, but first we're gonna apply custom fields. Now, custom fields are typically not gonna be necessary for the majority of uh, supplier products that you add by selecting a catalog. They uh, Custom fields are typically used for one of two reasons. One, to upcharge the customer. Two, gather additional information. So in this case, we're trying to gather additional information for when a customer supplies their own product. So what I wanna know is what is the product name slash code? You know, are you supplying a Nike polo? Are you supplying a Sport Tech t-shirt? I, I need um, 
some information. It, it would be helpful. Uh, so I keep an eye out for when the shirts arrive. In addition to the product name code, I also want to know what is the product color. And I'll let them add product colors. Now that I've made these custom fields, I want to come back to my product group and assign them to the customer supplied group. So that by default, our customers um, have to tell us what it is that they are supplying us. And this only applies to customer supplied goods. I don't want it to be on, again, hats or accessories, apparel. Only customer supplied do I need to know the product name and color. All right, so let's come over to products. When I created the product group, it created this customer supplied category. So what I suggest doing is copying a product for each type. So again, I need one t-shirt, one long sleeve, one hoodie. And select a product that comes in a lot of colors. So I like to use the Gildan product, something like the 5000 or 2000 represent a t-shirt. The 18500 represent a hoodie. They just come in a lot of colors. That way we can simulate as closely as possible what the uh, customers gonna actually be supplying us so I'm gonna take this Gildan 5000 I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna copy it I want to make a clone of it that I have complete control over because we need to white label the item so I made that copy and the first thing we're gonna do is change the product group we're not this is not an apparel product it is going to become a customer supplied product. And what we really need to do with the item is we need to white label it. We need to get rid of everything that says Gildan to this. So we're gonna come over to manage brands. We're gonna add a new brand. I'm just gonna call it customer supplied for the moment. Come back to the product. You only need to do this around a dozen times. There's only so many products that a customer will supply you. Sorry, I went too far. Now we'll come into the brand, choose customer supplied, and that Gildan is going to go away. I'm going to rename it. This is the customer supplied t shirt. I'm going to change the code CST. I'm going to get rid of the description. Just call it customer supplied t shirt, for example. Colors. I want every color to be available. The more, the merrier. Uh, decoration areas look good. Pricing, this is the big one. You need to make the blank price zero. You're not supplying the blank, the customer is. So I'm gonna click on this middle gear, click specify a blank product price. I'll use a single price, and this needs to be zero. For every color type, for every price level. Okay, so now we aren't charging anything for the blank. But I also need to come into sizes. And sometimes you need to define my own sizes, click on the gear, click create custom size surcharge prices, and you really wanna make sure that these larger sizes say zero. You don't wanna upcharge the customer for a more expensive item, they're supplying it. If I come over to supplier and purchasing, I don't want to raise a PO with Sanmar in this case. I want to change the supplier to customer supplied so that we can raise a PO under the supplier customer supplied and account for when the shirts actually physically arrive at the shop and thus we can produce them. Categories. I'm gonna take it out of all categories, 
and put it in my new customer supply category. I don't want this product getting lumped in with everything else that we supply. Um, availability. So when it comes to availability, I don't want it in any site by default. So I'm gonna put this only in Business Hub. Now do know that you can create a contract uh, ordering portal and assign these products to a site that's password protected and then have your contract clients go to that site to place their orders. It works perfect. Um, so do know that you don't have to just fit you know, yourself put together every quote and order for customer supplied products within Business Hub, you can um, help them uh, just by supplying that website. It's almost as quick and easy as them shooting you an email and you having to then redo the work in Business Hub yourself. Uh, lastly, we have custom fields. And these are already on because I assigned them to the product group and then I assigned the product group to this product. So that automatically turned the custom fields on. So this is the customer supply t-shirt. I would do the exact same steps for the long sleeve, the hoodie, and so forth. Then when I come over to Business Hub, I can then to select a customer, create a quota and order, add a product, and let's actually just take the Gildan 5000, the normal one. And let's just go ahead and add a piece of text, and we'll do screen printing. And you can see we have a one color here. And let's just make it 50 mediums. So the decoration price is 560, the unit price is 948 because I have the blank price, in this case 388 added to the 560 to get me to 948. Let's copy the product and treat it as if it is the customer supply t-shirt. So it is the, it really is the same product if you think about it, but this decoration price and this unit price will always be the same thing. It is um, still a, there is no, it's the same decoration price. There's just no blank price, as you can see, zero. The decoration within the, the table here, or um, the designer, I can put in the product name slash code and the product color, just like the customer will be able to on the site. So maybe this is, for example, we'll say it's the Sport Tech ST350 and the product color Midnight Navy. That gives me all the information I need to look out for this product when it arrives, or I can again put this together with the customer and uh, be able to reference it. So, as you can see, creating a generic customer supplied product to represent all shirts that would be supplied in that situation. Again, we did a uh, t shirt. That's gonna be 80% of what's supplied to you. Just that one shirt can represent almost anything that the, the customer brings to you. Um, because they're suppliers you've never heard of. They're, they're gonna go to retailers like Kohl's, TJ Maxx or somewhere, find a shirt, bring it to you. You don't wanna to have to be creating a blank product from scratch. And a free form item is less than ideal because it doesn't actually show the artwork on the product, you're not charging the accurate decoration price. That's why making these generic items is the best way to go. If you have any questions on how to create a customer supplied product, don't hesitate coming over to this question mark, raising a support ticket and client services can help you out. Hopefully you find this video helpful and thank you for watching.